What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to build a quick website with Django 4.0. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to build a quick website with Django 4.0, but before we get started, I want to let you know that my special birthday code, birthday44 over at CodingMe.com is still in effect. I went ahead and extended it for a couple of days because I got a bunch of emails saying, hey, can you extend that offer? So you can get all my courses at codemy.com regularly, $198 for just $44 because my birthday, that was a couple of days ago, coupon code birthday44, and that should work for the next day or so. So take advantage of that while you can. So, okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna knock out a very quick website with Django 4.0. I've been getting a lot of email from people asking me to, you know, build something really quickly with Django 4.0, see what the changes are from, you know, other versions of Django that we've been using. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to take a step back from our regular Django Wednesday just today only and knock out this quick website. So you can see we've got just a very basic website, home and about page, regular bootstrap nav bar, all the things. But we're going to start this from start to finish using the latest version of Django so you can see any changes that uh, may be in this version. And the good news is there's not a lot of real changes that you have to worry about. Of course, they've updated it. They've done all kinds of stuff behind the scenes. But as far as like creating a website, getting things up and running, doing the things you're used to doing with old versions of Django. Not a lot has changed. Just a couple of commands at the very beginning are very slightly different. So we're going to talk about that in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Django videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. Now, I've got absolutely no code because we haven't built anything yet. So first thing we're going to have to do is head over to our terminal and set everything up. So I've opened the Git Bash Terminal, and, and you can see I'm just in my C users code me directory. And code me is my logged in Windows username, whatever your Windows username is. That should be what you see here. So the first thing we need to do is create a directory. So I'm just going to go mkdir, and I want to put this in the C drive, and let's just call this Django for fun. <laughs> I don't know. So there we go. And let's move into that directory. cdc Django for, there we go. And you can see there's nothing in there now. So as always, let's create a virtual environment. So let's go python-m. We want a venv, start a virtual environment. And I'm just going to call this vert. I usually call it vert. And boom, boom, this should do its thing. And there we go. Now, if we ls, we can see we've got this vert directory. So that's good. Everything's been installed. So let's go ahead and turn this on in the normal way. We go source, vert, scripts, activate. And boom, there we go. We see we've got our virtual environment turned on. Okay. So now let's just pip install Django. So pip install Django. And this will get just the latest version of Django. I don't really know what that version is. Looks like 4.0.2. Okay, so we've got that. If we pip freeze, we can see we've got asdref Django 4.0.2, SQL parse, and TZ data. A little bit different than the old installation of Django 3 or Django 2 even, but eh, basically the same. So now we want to create a new project in the way we usually do it is go django-admin.py and then start project and then the project name. I'm just going to call this my site. Now that's not how you do it in Django 4. You go django-admin, pop, 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 and that's it. No dot .py. So that's really one of the big changes. And uh, that's kind of it. So we've got now this my site directory. We can cd into it and we can hit ls and we can see we've got our manage.py file, we've also got another my site directory. So we want to be right here in our directory here so that we could see this manage.py file. And if we wanted to, we could go Python manage.py run server, kick on the server, head back over to our web browser and go to localhost 8000 and boom, we get the Django installation screen. Congratulations, we've successfully installed Django. So, so far, not a whole lot different between old versions of Django and this version of Django, just the dot .py on that one command, and that's kind of it. So, okay, so let's come over here and go project, add folder to project, and we wanna go in our C directory, and we want that Django for fun, and we want my site. So click that, and boom, here we go. And this is just our normal stuff you would expect to see in any Django installation. Okay, so before we get into this, let's head over to the admin section and we don't have a super user. So, all right, let's set that up real quick. So let's control C to break out of our server and let's go Python manage.py 
and migrate. We always want to migrate that server at the beginning because there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes with Django that needs to be migrated for the admin section. So, all right, that looks good. Again, that's the same command that you would normally do with old versions of Django. So now let's create a super user. And this is the same process as the old versions of Django as well. We're using the git bash terminal. So we go win pty and then python manage.py create super user. And if you're using any other terminal, it's just you leave off this win pty thing here at the beginning. This is just a git bash thing. So we could do that. Username, I'm going to make it admin, email address, password, pop that in again. Okay, so that looks good. So let's go Python manage.py run server to run our server again. And let's head back over here and hit reload and see if that worked so we can log in. And boom, there we go. So we've got our user admin that seems to be working. All right, piece of cake. Okay, so let's now create a quick little project and we can call this anything we want. Let's break out of here and to do this as always, we go Python manage.py start app and then just name this thing. So uh, we called it my site for our app. I'm just going to call it website. I don't know. We're just going to build a, a simple little website app. And when we do that, we can come back over to sublime and boom. Now we have this website app that's been added and Anytime you create an app, the first thing you want to do is add it to your settings.py file is that has not changed. So let's head over to our settings.py file, create all these comments as always, and come down to your installed apps. And now normally you would just go website, right? And that will work with Django 4.0, but the documentation says to do website.apps.websiteconfig. And if we come through here in our website directory, we have this apps.py file that has this app config class of website config. So basically we're grabbing this, whatever it is and popping it right there, right? So website is because that's what the app is called website and then dot apps, which is our apps file here. And then dot website config website config. Now, like I said, you could just do website that will work, but I don't know. The documentation says do it this way. So we're going to do it this way now. <laughs> so let's go ahead and save that. Now, the next thing you always want to do is set up your URLs.py file. And again, I don't understand why Django out of the box doesn't create a URLs.py file in a new app that you created. So we just created this website app and you can see in here, it does not have a URLs.py file. So we're going to have to add one. So let's right click, create new file. File save as and call this URLs.py. Right now, head back to our old URLs.py file in our my site directory, and we need to add that guy. So here with path, we also want to include include, <laughs> include, include. And then here we just want to create a new path to that. And I don't know, I'll just leave it blank. We want it to be the root. And we just want to include website.urls URLs, right? So, okay, that'll work there. Now head over to our new URLs.py file. And actually let's go back to the old one. I'm just going to copy this and bring it over to this new one, paste it in. And we don't need include and we don't need that, but we do want to include our views, our views.py file. So let's go from dot import views. And that's, we've always done this with old Py, with old, old Django versions as well. Okay. So here let's create a path. And let's say like that, we want it, we want it to be the root and we want views dot, I don't know, index. And we'll create that in a second and let's name this index. Okay. So now we need to create that view and that file in our website directory. Let's come down here and first let's create a new folder and I'm going to call this templates just like we always would templates. And then inside of this, I'm going to create a new file. I might also create a new directory called website inside of this and break it down again, uh, but we don't really have to for now. Let's just go H1 homepage H1 and let's save this as index.html in our templates directory. See, boom, there it is. And now let's head over to reviews.py file and let's create a view. So let's define index. We want to pass in request as always. 
And then let's just return render request. And this is index.html. And we've got nothing to pass in it yet. So, okay, that looks good. Let's head back over to the website and see if that worked. Hit reload. Uh, let's see, we got to turn it on our server again, though, first. So, python manage.py runs server. Okay, now that's up and running. Now head back over here, hit reload, boom, homepage. Okay, so, so far we're up and running and there's not a whole lot different from old versions of Django. So let's talk about the static files. Remember static files are CSS files, JavaScript files, and images. And this tends to get changed from version to version of Django. And when they went from version two to version three of Django, they messed up all the static stuff. That seems to be taken care of in this new version of Django 4.0. You don't really have to do much anything except the way we used to do it in the olden days by just creating a static directory and you know using it as you normally would. So what I'm gonna do is come over to our website directory, right click and create a new folder, call this static. Again, I'm not sure why Django doesn't do this by default because all websites use this. And then inside of here, let's create another directory called website because that's what our app is called. And then inside of here, let's create a new file and let's go file, save as, and we wanna call this style.css, just a basic CSS file, right? And inside of here, let's just create some real quick CSS just to see if this is working. So inside of here, let's go color blue, all right? For our H1 tags and then, yeah, that's fine. We'll just leave that as that. So go ahead and save this. So let's say we wanted to start using this, we could come over to index.html file, and up here, just like in old versions, we have to load our static file, and then we can just use this. So let's create a head tag. Our CSS always goes in the head tag, right? And then let's just go link, rel, this is gonna be a style sheet of type equals text slash CSS, and then href equals, and then inside of here, as always, we just create a static tag, right? So this is gonna be static, and then website slash style.css. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this, see if that worked. Head back over here. Now, if we refresh this, that should be blue now. It is not, because it's another thing about Django, you always have to restart your server when you add a static thing. I don't know why. It's always been the case forever. So we can just break out of here, run this guy again, and then reload and boom, now it's blue, right? So that's how you use static CSS files. Same thing goes with JavaScript, same thing goes with images. You just create that static directory. Django knows to look for it. It's built to do that. So it's another reason why I don't know why they don't just create a static directory by default when you create a new app, but I don't know. At least now it works basically the same way Django 2.0 used to. You don't have to finagle with your settings.py file in any way. So, okay, that looks good. What else do we wanna do? Now, normally we would create a base file. So let's do that. Click on templates, go to new file, go save as base.html. And we wanna load our static to our base, not our HTML page. So we'll move that over. And as always, we're gonna need a block content and an in block tag. So that looks good. And we can copy this and bring it over to our index page and pop this in here. And so I'm gonna add this right here and this right here, right? And we're gonna move this over to the base. And we'll play with this in a minute. But also here we have to tell our file, hey, use that base file. And to do that, just like old versions, we just call extends and then base.html. Okay, so that will work. So for our base file, instead of just this, let's use some bootstrap, we usually do. So let's head over to getbootstrap.com, click on the docs, go down to uh, the main page and grab the starter template. I'm just gonna copy it, click the copy button, head back over here, and I'm just gonna paste it all in. And let's grab these two tags and bring them up here. And inside of here, let's go H1, home page. There we go. And I'm also gonna wrap this in a div of class equals container. 
as we usually do with bootstrap to kind of give it a little gutter, right? And we also want to close that div right there. Tab all this over to make it look pretty. Okay, so that looks good. And I also want this guy. So let's copy this. And let's get rid of these two tags and bring this up here so that our own custom CSS will also be added. Save this, head back over to the website, hit reload, and boom, it pops it over. It changes the font a little bit. It's still blue. But all right, that's looking good. So nothing to see there. We might give this a BR tag just to push it down the screen a little bit. Save this, head back. There we go. So, all right, that looks pretty good. We might also want to add a nav bar. And as always, let's create a new file for that. So right click on templates, new file, save as navbar.html. And let's head back over to the Bootstrap website and grab a quick nav bar. Click on components, scroll down to nav bar, grab the one that we like. This one will do. Click copy, bring it back, paste it in there. And right here, I'm going to change this to John Elder. I want to change this to navbar dark instead of navbar light. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. Now we need to include that in our base file. So right underneath here, let's just use the regular include tag. So include and then navbar.html. There we go. Save this, head back, hit reload, boom, there we go. And we've got all this stuff we probably don't need. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this disabled one and this drop down one. So head back over here, look down through here. Oh, we want the nav bar page. Look through here for the drop down. Click on the LI. Here is the closing LI, so we can get rid of all of that. Save this, head back over, hit reload. All right, boom, that's gone. We also want to get rid of that disabled link. That's this guy right here. So we can just get rid of that. Come back here, hit reload, boom, that's gone too. All right, so looking good so far. Let's create a quick about page and wrap this up. Head back over here, click on templates, new file, file save as, and let's call this about.html. And we'll go to my index page, and I'm just going to copy all of this and bring it over here. And instead of saying home page here, let's have it say about me. Save this. And actually, inside of here, we don't want that. Let's take that out of our base.html file. All right, so now let's create a URL for this guy. I'm just going to copy this one and paste it in again. But this one will be about, and we want this to be views.about. And we want the name to be about. Okay, so save this. Finally, let's create a view for this guy. And we can just copy this guy, paste it in again. But now it's going to be about, and this will point to about.html. Okay, so now we need a link for this in our nav bar. So let's head over to our nav bar. And let's come up here to this link and instead call this about me. And we're just going to use a Django URL tag. As always, so URL and just point it to about. All right, so that should do the trick. Let's head back over here, hit reload. Now we've got this about me link. If we click on it, boom, it goes to about. If we click this one, it doesn't do anything. So we need to add that. So let's head back over here real quick. And for our home, let's add another URL tag, URL, point it to index. And actually, I'm going to copy this guy, and I'm going to come up here to where it says John Elder, and also pop that in right there. Okay, so let's save this, head back over here, reload. Now, when we click home, it goes to the home page. When we click about, it goes to about me. When we click John Elder, it goes to the home page. All right, so that's it. <laughs> right, so a very, very basic website. But you know, once you have this structure, you can do anything you want. I mean, you don't have to use Bootstrap, you can use any HTML template that you can find. And you know, most HTML templates come with their own CSS file. Well, you know how to do that as well. Because we've set up our static stuff right here. You know, we've got this style.css. If you had a template from some other website that you downloaded that had its own CSS file, you would just, you know, paste it in right there and you're good to go. So not a lot of changes from our point of view with the new Django version 4.0. Most of the commands are the same, you know, to create the project, uh, to run the server, to make to start a project, to add an app, to, you know, set up the super user and do all of that stuff, uh, to do the static stuff, to create your URLs.py file, to 
add templates to you know do your views.py file. All of that stuff is the same as Django 3, Django 2, not Django 1. Django 1 was weird, <laughs> but uh, Django 2 and Django 3, which is what we've been using on the channel for years now. So any of my videos that you've been watching that are using older versions of Django, you should still be able to use all of that with Django 4. You know, there's not much difference really at all. It comes right down to it. So that's kind of cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code birthday44 to get all my courses for just $44, regularly $198. That's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.